what's going on guys Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to save time in Revit and well not actually to save time but to save time when making changes to your projects in Revit but before we get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day okay so let's get started when working in Revit you've probably thought, well, what does Revit even mean? Well, it actually means uh, revise and edit. So uh, the program, the original idea behind Revit was to take a 3D program, a simple 3D program, and then to make some adjustments so you can revise and edit your projects easier and just to save time. So let me start here an architectural project for this and just to give you a little demonstration. So whenever you're working on some big project, you're going to have some changes. And if you were working in AutoCAD, you would have to really change all of the floor plans if you make some uh, larger changes to your building. And in Revit, you don't have to do that. But you can even save extra time by setting up the project uh, the right way in the beginning. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say you've got some simple building with some columns. So let's add some columns. I'm just going to here go to structure, column, and let's load in some concrete columns, like maybe this square column, open that up. But before we do th those, uh, let's add some grids. So I'm just going to be placing a few grid lines like this. I don't know, a couple like this, and then a couple going across from that. And let's just change the names. This should maybe be A, and this should maybe be B. And okay, we've got some grid lines and let's add some columns. So just go here to column. And as you can see here, we've got an option to place columns at grids. So I'm just going to choose that option, select all of the grids, hit finish. And as you can see, now we've got columns on grids. But now let's say we want to make some changes to this. And uh, uh, if you want to make changes to these, uh, these grid lines, let's move one of them. And now if I move the grid line, as you can see, the column is actually kind of constrained to that grid line. If I move this one, the column, uh, both these two columns move with it. So whenever you make adjustments uh, like that to your grid lines, the columns will follow because automatically when you place columns at grid intersections, then they get constrained and locked to your grid lines and any changes you make to the grid lines, uh, that change will automatically transfer to your columns. But this is only the beginning. Let's add a wall over here. But first, let me check these columns. Yeah, they're going from level one to level two. That's okay. Then let's go with a simple wall and let's place a wall between these two columns. Okay, so we've got a wall and let's say now somebody says, well, we need to change the, those uh, grid lines once again. And you go to change the grid line and this happens. And your, uh, your whole wall is completely out of the picture. So how do you adjust for this? Well, let's place our wall back here. And now if I go here to the align tool, so AL is the shortcut for align, or you can go here to the modify tab and find the align tool. Now, if I go here to the outside of this column, usually you would have walls going to the outside. And then if I select first this line, then this line of the wall and lock it in place, this is the important part. Now, once this is locked in place, if I go here and move this grid line, as you can see, now the grid line is moving the column and the column is actually moving the, the wall. And you don't have to constrain it to both columns uh, as far as the top line is concerned, only to, the, to this here, uh, one, of, one of the columns. Now, let's say I go here to the, this grid line and move it. And as you can see, the wall is now disconnected. And if we do the same thing on the other side, we have another problem. Let me close that. Okay, so how do you fix this? Well, now, again, go to the Align tool and just align this to that, lock it in place, align this to that, lock it in place. And now if we make any changes to any of the grid lines, as you can see, the walls will follow, or in this case, one wall. Now, again, this is only the beginning part. Now we've got columns, we've got walls, let's add a floor. So if you want to add floor to this, let's go to architecture, floor, and go with the rectangle. And as you can see now, I'm just going to go from this corner of this column over here, to this corner of this column over here. Place it there and as you can see I automatically get these three constraints. So these two constraints are uh, these two little uh, kind of locking uh, symbols. Uh, they, they're giving me an option to lock it to this part of the column. Same thing on this side, to this part of the column. And here I've got one to lock it to the wall. So I'm just going to lock all of those and hit finish. 
And now if I make changes, if I move this out of the way, this doesn't follow. But if I move this or this or this, it does follow. That's because we didn't have an option to lock this to this column. So you can just go to edit boundary, again go to the align tool, and then just align this floor to one of the columns. And then just hit finish. And there you go. Now we've got that. So now we can add maybe one more wall. So let's go here to architecture, another wall, and let's place it like this. So you can just place it like that, then go with the align tool and align it in place, lock it here, lock it here. And as you can see, I'm always first selecting the object that's determining the movement. So in this case, that would be the column, and then the object that's being moved, in this case, the wall. Lock it in place, and now if I go to the modify tool, as you can see, if I just move it around, it moves along with it. So those are some of the options for locking things in place. But it doesn't have to be like this, like straight locked, uh, as you can see here, where we've got two aligned elements. We can actually lock elements at a certain distance. So let's give, give us here a bit of room, and then let's go to the, uh, the floor tool, and let's say we want to have a podium over here. So I'm just going to go to floor, and this is a 400 millimeter floor, and I'm going to give it an offset of 400 millimeters, so it's going to be above ground. So we have kind of a podium in the middle of this room. And here, let's say I want to have an offset of one meter around this podium, so you can walk around it. And to make that, I'm just going to add some uh, dimension lines. So you can go here to align dimension, you can go over here to the quick access toolbar to align dimension, or my favorite one, just use the shortcut, DI for aligned dimension. Then let's select the grid line, this here outside line, place it there. Do the same thing on the other side, place it there, do the same thing here, and as you can see, I'm always starting first from the grid line, that's going to determine the movement, and then to the thing that's going to be moved, in this case, this podium that's actually a floor. Okay, so I've got those dimensions, and now I need to uh, kind of give it the right dimensions. So let's place a thousand millimeters here, a thousand millimeters here, and the same thing for these two. So a thousand and a thousand. Okay, so now this is uh, looking the way I want it to look, but if I want to keep these dimensions the same, even though I'm moving around these grid lines, what I have to do is select each one and lock it in place. So select each one of them and lock them in place. Okay, now go here to finish, and we've got this floor or this podium, but if I go and change my grid lines, this will change with it. If I just select the wall and change, it will change with it. So any uh, any changes you make to the project, as you can see in this case, it's actually going to follow and transfer to all of the other elements. So you're saving time on all of those changes that you're going to be making. And whenever you have an architecture project, you always have millions of changes because of small little details that you didn't, didn't know about previously, and now you have to change it. Okay, so we've got our little podium room going on over here. Let's a add a door to it. So let's place a door like this. Okay, so we've got a door over here and we can actually constrain the door. Let's let's use one of these dimension lines. So let's go into DI for dimension and let's just align it like this. And let's say this door should be, the center of the door should be at 3000 millimeters from the grid line and let's just lock it in place. We can move this out of the way over here, or if you don't want to look at these dimensions, but you still want to keep the constraints, you can select it, go over here and hide that element. And then if you go over here to reveal hidden elements, you're going to see you've got that dimension line. Just if you don't want to kind of have too many constraints on your uh, drawing, just visually. And now if I go into move any elements like this, as you can see, now this door will follow, it will always be at 3 meters, and here we've got this imaginary line that's just showing us that we have that constraint in place. Okay, but let's say we've got our podium room and then there's a street over here. So I'm just going to use some, uh, just go to annotate, use some detail lines, and let's add a rectangle over here, that's kind of a representation of a street. Now, because of building regulations, you're usually going to have to constrain some uh, elements uh, just due to that. So in this case, let's say we cannot move this wall, this grid line, these columns, any way closer or further away from the street. We need this to stay in place over here. So how do you set that up? Well, you just need to select this grid line, and once it's selected, let me just align it with the other one, once it's selected, go here to the pin tool, or just use the shortcut PN, 
and you get this little pin. Now you can unpin it or pin it, and once it's pinned in place, pin, pinned in place, you can't move it. So if I select it and move it, it, nothing happens. I can move this one, I can move this one, but I cannot move the one that's close to the street. Why? Because we said that we can't move anyway clo anywhere closer or further away from the street. This dimension should always stay in place and that's why we have that option to pin it in place. So maybe if somebody else opens up the drawing and wants to make some changes and they go, oh, I can move this closer to the street. And then there's that little pin in place and then he, he or she knows that, well, you can't move it anywhere closer to the street. It's pinned in place for a good reason. But yeah, so those are all of those tools and action that's actually going to save you a lot of time when working and revising and editing all of your projects. Now, uh, don't think that this should be used all of the time. If you're, let's say this whole house, if this is part of your student project and you're just kind of trying to throw some walls and floors in place just to have a representation of a house, you don't really need to constrain it in place because it's probably going to be deleted anyway and something else is going to be modeled. But once you have the kind of the basic uh, premise of and, or the idea where the project is going to be and uh, just to start modeling, this uh, uh, constraining everything in place, as you can see, if I select anything, we've got a lot of these locks in place and a lot of these constraints. It's just going to make the whole process of making those small additional changes that are always necessary to be made during the during the design process and adding installations and everything else when you have to kind of make these just small adjustments. This, uh, these constraints are actually going to save you a lot of time on making those changes. Okay, so I hope you have learned something new and useful and I hope you can implement this into your projects and I hope I can save you a few moments of your time here and there and give you extra time to watch Balkan Architect Revit tutorials on YouTube. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Okay, so that's pretty much it from me for today. And I'll see you with another tutorial coming tomorrow.